I have been focusing a lot in, you know, away, away from doing podcasting, focusing a lot on the immigrant crisis on our southern border. Um, the slaughter of children in Gaza is just about pushing me to the brink of madness. The continued killing of civilians in Ukraine by the Russian monster Putin has added to that push. And then being aware of and seeing the videos of people who are trying to get to this country from Central America and South America and still some people from Mexico, too, in in order to save their own lives, to save the lives of their families, their children. That also now is, is just building up with me to the point where it gets very difficult to get into any kind of a celebratory mood. Uh, I was thinking about this particular ho- holiday, the Easter holiday, which was stolen from the Wiccans and the pagans. It used to be in celebration of the uh, spring equinox and the rebirth, joy, love, um, sex, all sorts of things. And then, of course, the Christians co-opted this one just like they co-opted the winter solstice. But that's a different story, and I really don't give a shit anymore about what how the Christians tried to steal everything that they couldn't understand and twist it into what they twisted it into. Okay, I know, I know, I shouldn't do this every day, right? Well, yeah, okay. But in looking at some of the pictures of the immigrants, especially the kids, I I think about what uh, happened when I was a child. And my mother always made sure that we colored Easter eggs. She also made sure that we went to church. She didn't accompany us, nor did my father, but she always made sure my mother did that we went to church. Now, my grandparents, on the other hand, were real churchgoers, as you know, if you're a regular listener to this podcast. But I think about what we did as a kid. To this day, if I smell vinegar, (laughs) it reminds me of coloring Easter eggs because the vinegar was part of the solution into which you dip the eggs in order to get the, you know, the the vivid colors. And I think about the kids that I have had over the course of my adult life and grandchildren. And I think about how many times, um, for example, the latest one, Molly, who's about to turn 20, how many times when she was a child and we still had an intact family, we would do the Easter egg thing. You know, colorful, beautiful Easter eggs in a huge Easter bunny basket. Now, we, you know, she knew as she got older what the celebration was supposed to be about, what the Christians had stolen from the pagans, but she was happy enough just to celebrate the the candy and the flowers and, and the happiness and the Easter bunny and so on and so forth. But I think about the immigrants who are on our southern border right now during this holy weekend on the Christian in the Christian calendar and the Christian religion. And I've seen pictures and videos lately of, of children and, and their mothers and fathers and brothers and babies camped in boxes and and tarps and tents trying to figure out what to do with their lives because they you know they struggle to get to the promised land, right? They struggle to get away from the poverty and, and the environmental degradation and the political chaos, most of which was caused by U.S. policies to Central and South America over the past 125 years. Let's be honest, okay? Can we do that? Of course we can. Um, but I think about our dependence on immigrants to this country. Now, I'm, I'm not, I'm, let, let me rephrase it. I think about our dependence on Hispanic or Latino or Central or South American immigrants who somehow make it into this country one way or the other. Where I walk, there is a neighborhood that I dip into uh, on my walks where there are houses being built. And to the last person, every single house builder, Every single person who helped lay the foundation, clear the land first, lay the foundation, build the basement, then start working on the house. Every single one of them is obviously an Hispanic immigrant. I don't care if they're documented. I don't know if they are. I really don't give a shit. But there they are working like crazy. You cannot go for a walk in a neighborhood, These, uh, the, especially now with spring hitting so much of the central and southern part of the United States. 
without hearing those ubiquitous and I hate them leaf leaf blowers, the leaf blowers and and the high powered uh, mowing machines. And there they are again, Latino men and women working their asses off. Um, you can't go buy a house being painted and expect to see white people or black people. You see Latino people. What did I hear the other day that an estimate by um, one of the American um, government agencies, the estimate was that if every single migrant in this country, and, and when, nowadays when you talk about migrant, come on, they're not talking about Canadians, they're not talking about Polish, they're not talking about uh, Ukrainians, they're talking about Latino, they're talking about people from Central and South America and Mexico. If every single immigrant who is here without the proper documentation were removed tomorrow, the government estimate is over the next 10 years, it would cost the United States 900 million, uh, 900 billion, I'm sorry, just shy of a trillion dollars in lost earnings, which are then taxed, which uh, a percentage of which goes into the U.S. Social Security Fund, that goes into unemployment fund, it goes in uh, all of this money. And then I listened to this filthy son of a bitch, Donald Trump, denigrating immigrant people. And and again, it, it, it yes, I believe that there should be some sort of a system to allow people into the country. You know, that's how my grandparents on both sides of my family, my direct grandparents, I'm not that far removed, one generation removed from immigrants from the Irish side, from the Italian side. I remember my grandfather telling me about what it was like to come through Ellis Island and the questions he was asked and and the brief physical he had to take. And this was back, you know, at the turn of the 20th century, for God's sake. But I think about when I go, for example, when I go to the grocery store and I go into the fruits and vegetables section, and I buy a, a, a pint of strawberries or blueberries or a pick a head of lettuce up or, or, or some oranges or, or maybe bananas or a few apples or something. And I know, I know that every single item that I take out of the produce section at one time was in the hands of a Latino person, either in this country or in Central America. And, you know, it occurs to me how dependent we are in this country on immigrants. If they have to be documented, then God damn it, document them. Give them something. I mean, what the hell? What is this bullshit? And how it's been turned into this filthy, neo-fascist political argument. Oh, well, you know, they're going to replace us. Oh, shut the fuck up. They're going to replace, they're not going to replace anybody. The hell is wrong with us white people, huh? I mean, seriously, where do we pick up this shit? This paranoia about people who don't come from Northern Europe, for God's sake. I, I mean, at one time, both sides of my family were considered scum. Irish, Italian, and Jews. Oh, keep them out of the country. Keep them out of the country. <sighs> immigrants. Immigrants. Latino immigrants, Hispanic, however you want to identify. And I look at these videos and these pictures of people camped on our southern border, thousands of them on both sides of the Rio Grande, waiting, just waiting. After some of them having made a, a, a trip from Central America through goddamn jungles and swamps and mud and shit and bandits and gangsters and, and, and snakes and all kinds of shit. Just to get here. And then be told by a bunch of white Christian devils, demons, in the U.S. House of Representatives. Oh, no, you're not coming in here. Fuck you. You're not coming in. I, I, I don't know how people have the capacity. I'm talking about the immigrants. Have the capacity to keep going. And, and for the most part, the people that are clotting up at our southern border are either Catholic Christians or evangelical Christians. 
because the filthy evangelical church has converted so many people away from another sickness, Catholicism. You know, you go from one sickness to another, and yet there they sit waiting for just any kind of an indication that the people who are passing the laws in this country or not passing laws to keep them out are Christians just like they are. I would imagine the immigrants, maybe, maybe one or two of them, when they're boiling some fucking water at night in order to have some beans or something, I wonder if they if they say, hey, listen, you know, our Messiah told us to welcome the stranger, to uh, treat other people the way we want to treat. I, I thought they were Christians up there in Norte Americano. What's happening? I can't help it. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits, like me, Mike Malloy, 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me... Mike Malloy are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial, but we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.